will begin startup, and the first and second stages will begin to pressurize for launch. Falcon 9's in startup. There we heard the call out. Falcon 9's in startup. The onboard flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. T minus 45 seconds, I'll just go for launch. There we heard it, our final go for launch today. At this point in time, we are green for today's launch. Let's listen in to the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our stack of Starlink satellites into orbit. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage 1, chamber pressure is nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying our stack of Starlink satellites into orbit. There we just heard that power and telemetry are all nominal. We're going to throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q. And this is the largest, this is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see during ascent. So slowing the vehicle down a little helps during that short period. Max Q coming up here in just a couple of seconds. Q. There we heard the call out for Max Q. Now, over in, the, in about a minute, the next three events will be happening back to back. First, we have main engine cutoff or MECO, and that's where all nine of the M1D engines that are currently firing will shut down. And this will help slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is event number two. Stage and, one is following a nominal trajectory. And as the name suggests, Stage SEP is where the first and second stages will separate from each other, and the first stage will start to make its way back down to Earth for landing on our drone ship, while second stage continues its journey with the third event, uh, SCS-1, or second engine start one. This is where the MVAC engine will light up and begin to propel the second stage along with those Starlink satellites to orbit. And that main engine cutoff event is taking place in about 10 seconds. Great shot there of the vehicle prior to Miko. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. All right, all three of those events happening in quick succession prior to MVAC ignition there that you see caught a glimpse of. Oh, and on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see the Space Coast illuminated by the night lights. That's an awesome shot there as we see the grid fins beginning their deployment. So everything looking great there on second stage. Bearing separation confirmed. We heard the verbal call out. And Those there on your screen, you can see. Trajectories. All right, great news all around. We had fairing separation. Those will, uh, we'll be attempting to recover those using our recovery vessels. Then we heard everything looking nominal for both first and second stages. It's dark on the left-hand side of your screen there as the Space Coast night lights fade out of view, but that first stage is going to uh, coming, be coming back down and making a landing. 
And in order to do so, it'll be executing two burns in order to make that drone ship landing. The first burn is the entry burn, where three of the M1D engines will reignite. This will help to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and that is a- Acquisition of signal Bermuda. And that is a single engine burn where we will reignite the center engine and that will help bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to make a soft landing on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Everything continues to look great there. Trajectory looking nominal for our second stage. Bright white glow coming from that MVAC nozzle. So at this point in time, the first stage. Those vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. At this point, the first stage is now beginning to descend back to Earth. It is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins that are positioned near the top of the first stage. We don't have any light illuminating the vehicle at the moment, so can't really make them out on camera. So we're providing you views of our second stage instead. But those grid fins that we saw deploy earlier uh, are what stage one uses to help steer as the stage makes its way back to Earth. They help orient and guide the booster during re-entry and during descent. Additionally, the first stage will occasionally use nitrogen gas bursts for attitude control and less visible at night, but certainly during our daytime launches, you can see them as little white puffs near the top of the rocket. Falcon 9 first stage is also equipped with four landing legs, and we make those using state-of-the-art carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb. And those are placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket and deploy just a few seconds prior to landing. So we're expecting that entry burn to begin in five seconds. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn startup. All right, so this 20 second burn has just begun. And you can see that there on the left hand side of your screen. If you look closely, you might be able to see those grid fins actuate to assist Stage one, entry burn, shut down. Steering of that uh, stage one, and as you just heard, shut down of that entry burn. That is the Let's first of- Continue to follow nominal trajectories. That is the first of two burns that that first stage will perform today. Good news there that both vehicles are, are following nominal trajectories. That landing burn will take place in just under a minute. Because this landing is a drone ship landing instead of a land landing or return to launch site landing, uh, there's only two, borns, two, excuse me, two burns required for this landing attempt as opposed to three. Because it, the, because the first stage follows an arc, uh, there is no boost back or- entry transonic. There is no boost back or flip maneuver required. So only two burns being executed today. Everything continuing to look nominal there with the second stage as it carries our stack of Starlink satellites. And that landing burn out oh, there. We have a shot of the drone ship holding position in the Atlantic Ocean. Landing burn startup. And there we can see the lights beginning to illuminate the platform and the waters around. Stage two is entered terminal. Stage minutes. one, landing leg deploy. Okay, let's see if we're able to stick this landing. Looks pretty good. There we can see the first stage has landed. This marks the this marks the 74th successful recovery of an orbital class rocket and the fifth recovery for that particular booster that you see there. 
So that's all great news for the first stage. Turning our attention to the second stage there. Second engine cutoff is expected momentarily. Seco. And there we heard the call out for Seco, second engine Signal cutoff. Signal, Kate. And we're gonna wait to hear the call out for good orbit. Nominal parking orbit insertion. Okay, there we just heard, we got a good orbit there for second stage. It's gonna coast for a little bit in this orbit, actually for the next 35 minutes or so. While that happens, take a look at this animation showcasing where we are in the coast phase. We'll see you back here at T plus 45 minutes for a second stage relight. 